So as you saw in my last video, I've completed my year on exchange at Imperial College London. Now, London isn't exactly the cheapest place to live. Plus, when you throw in some traveling and attending events you don't get to see in Australia, the costs really start to add up. In today's video, we're going to be looking at how much money I spent and how much it costs to be a student living in London. Let's get into this video and see how much damage it did to my poor bank account. So for those of you new to the channel, my name is Shane and I'm a third year engineering and commerce student at the University of Sydney. On this channel, we share a lot of unique studying tips and tricks as well as insights into college and uni life. So if any of that is useful or interesting to you, subscribe to this channel to not miss out on any more of these videos in the future. I completed my exchange at Imperial College London from September 2019 to March 2020. And it was actually because of the coronavirus pandemic that I had to leave early. I was actually uh, meant to leave in June, but I had to leave in March and complete the rest of my studies online. So the total time I did end up spending in London was about six months. As any good accountant and business student would do, we're not using our calculator. We will be using Excel for this detailed financial breakdown. And we'll also be doing a bank reconciliation in addition to just adding up these expenses to make sure we didn't make any major mistakes and everything seems to add up correctly. Firstly, as an Australian person to study in London, we have fixed as well as variable costs. So these would be things like my visa, my compulsory Medicare equivalent, to the UK, the NHS, and I would also have, of course, my flight to London and from London back to Sydney, Australia. So the flight ticket we booked was from Etihad Airways from Sydney to London, and that was a single price of $916.35 AUD. I didn't want to book my return trip in advance because I wasn't sure exactly which day I was going to come back. It could either be in late June or early June, depending if I wanted to stay there um, and travel a bit more after my exams did end up finishing. But in the end, it turns out I had to return early. So this worked out good for me because I didn't have to book an extra ticket that would have gone to waste. Then on the way from London to Sydney, Australia, that was when the coronavirus started to really pick up. And then there weren't many flights and all the flights were a little bit more expensive, but we still managed to get a decent deal. And the price for that trip, was 447 pounds and 35p which is the equivalent if you just times by two to about 900 AUD which is actually a decent price but because of the Emirates policy I only had 23 kilos of luggage allowance I did end up having to pay a bit extra to purchase extra baggage and that cost me another 102 pounds exactly for five kilograms of extra luggage so therefore in total that probably cost about 1100 AUD and we'll work this all out later using our Excel sheet. Then we also had our UK immigration visa, which was 651 AUD. Plus there was also our immigration healthcare surcharge because we were staying in London for more than six months. So we had to pay for healthcare and that worked out to be 561 AUD. So straight away, there's about $3,000 of expenses just for the plane tickets and the insurance and visa of living in London. So those are the fixed costs, which is pretty much what we had to pay no matter how long we stayed there. And now let's move on to the variable costs. So these are things like your weekly accommodation, your food, your transport, and any kind of like entertainment that you want to be spending on during your stay as a study abroad or exchange student. During my time as an exchange student in London, what I did was I used an app called Money Manager, which is completely free and I'm not sponsored or anything to promote it, but it was what I used to keep track of all of my expenses from food to entertainment to transport and everything like that. Anytime I spend money, whether it was by card or by cash, i will write it down into that app. Then what I've done is I've exported it into an Excel file. So what I have is a list of all of my income and my expenses during my time in London as an exchange student. And I've had it all categorized into different things like transportation, bills, food, etc. And then I've also included a short memo of what that was for. So in case I forget it or anything, the amount and I also have the date that I spent that money. And as you can see, there's a whole heap of expenses that's occurred. And this is for my entire six months that I was there for. So then what I can do is I can use a few neat little formulas and then I can sum up and categorize these into the different months that I was there for and kind of just break down where all my expenses kind of went. And then I can also split these into different categories like transport, food, etc. 
We're using a neat little sum if formula just to count all this stuff automatically. And from there, we can see that transport, food, and travel were my three biggest causes of expenses. So in regards to transport, where I mostly spent my money on was because I wasn't living exactly on campus. I had to travel to get there by using the tube. Um, yeah, I had to get up early, early in the morning. And then also all the trains were really packed and it wasn't just a it was kind of a miserable place to be, to be honest. Um, and it was also pretty expensive as well. Like one trip was £2.50, but with the rail car discount, what you could do was if you went off peak, then you could get a 33% off. So that was something I chose to do and that only worked for off peak hours. So what that meant I had to do was if it was during on peak times, I'd try to wait uh, a little later in the morning to get into the tube station or if I had to leave school at about four o'clock, I might leave a little earlier just to make sure I got into the tube station before four to save myself that ADP. So to be honest, £433.50 is not actually too bad in my opinion for six months of travel to and from school, as well as just traveling around London to visit all the different sites and whatnot. The other options you could take is in some cities you can rent a bike, for example, in Copenhagen. You could do that in London as well, but I felt that the safest way was probably to just use the Oyster card, or you could just use your bank card to tap on and tap off when you're traveling using the London Tube or when you're using those buses to travel around. Otherwise, walking was another option that I chose to do often because that would save some money. For example, distances up to two kilometers, I would generally try to walk that if I had the time. For example, when I was going to travel to get my haircuts in Farringdon at the London School of Barbering, um, it meant I could save three pounds by not using the tube or using the bus and walking about two kilometers to get there, which was about a half an hour walk, but that was fine. And I was also saving money since the haircuts that I was receiving were all free. My next huge expense was on food. I want to eat good food to be happy. So for me, that was a reasonable expense that I could take. And I would buy things from Sainsbury's or Mark and Spencer since the food quality was a little bit better than the Lido or Audi there. Occasionally, I would also go out to eat with some friends. Um, other than that, I often generally cook for myself in a hall since there was no catering provided and I wouldn't mind if I had to spend a bit more to get some good quality ingredients that I really wanted to eat like um, for example duck breast or some salmon fillets. So in total that costs exactly £1,325.63p. For six months I think that's a little bit more than I was hoping to get that down to but because I really like to eat good food and I also wanted to experience some of that um, food culture when I was in London, when I was in Switzerland and also when I was in France. I wanted to try those variety of European foods that I wouldn't be able to get if I was back home in Australia. So the second biggest expense category is actually um, traveling around. So that includes travel to, uh, for example, Brighton, Bath and Canterbury when I was in the UK. And also that includes some European travel that I decided to go on and embark on as well. So for me, I went to Edinburgh, Switzerland and Paris to have a look around and just pretty much make the most of my time in London and in Europe. So these include things like my plane tickets, which I generally book with EasyJet or Ryanair just because they were the cheapest ones available, um, even though they weren't that great on customer service or quality and also my travel accommodation and any expenses for transport that I would incur over there. For example, the most expensive thing was in Switzerland, which was the Swiss travel pass and that itself was about 370 francs if I remember correctly, but that was needed to get us around Switzerland as we weren't able to rent a car. So we had to use that public transport. So travel in total was £1,209.73p and that's actually not as much as I was expecting because because of the coronavirus, we had to cut our road trip for Europe, uh, where we'd go to Germany, Italy, and a few of the Eastern European countries. So that helped reduce that cost down, but I feel it could have been a bit higher if I did end up deciding to stay for longer. And that expense isn't something I recommend you cut down on because you want, you're you traveling on exchange, you're studying abroad, you want to make the most use of your time that you're there. It's an experience that you're enjoying and you might not get to do that again for at least a few more years. So it's definitely something valuable and you'll remember it a lot more than every little thing that you did at home. So the other few things that I did spend some money on was on snacks, which is just just like chocolate, um, biscuits, cookies. I really enjoyed the digestive biscuits over there and the hobnobs. Uh, just a few things I liked about London and I couldn't find them in Australia. It was actually very hard to find as they were imported. Oh, another thing with my snacks was I really enjoyed drinking bubble tea. Uh, it was a bit expensive over there, but um, sometimes you just gotta 
let your addiction get the better of you. And yeah, that was a pretty big expense that contributed to the snacks being um, 60 pounds or so. Of course, I also had to pay for things like my bills, um, my phone service, which I used was GifGaf, and that was, I think, 10 pounds each month. So that's actually not too bad for six gigabytes of data. In London, you don't actually need too much data because when you're on the tube, you actually don't have any service, which is another terrible thing that I found about it. Um, that just means when you're on the tube, there's not much you can do besides listen to some downloaded music or a podcast. Um, you can't really watch any videos or message anyone because there's no service available. So since that is the time that I generally use the most data, I chose a small data plan, which was only six gigabytes. You could even get away with two gigabytes. You just need it for Google Maps or whatnot when you're traveling around. So that that shouldn't be a huge expense when you're over there. Another big expense of mine was on entertainment. So because of London's great culture, I went to a few uh, different shows and a few theater performances. For example, The Mousetrap, uh, Lion King and Wicked, as well as uh, my favorite football game, which was Bayern Munich against Chelsea in the Champions League round of 16. That was 180 pounds, but I feel like it was a really valuable experience for me just because I'm a big football fan and of Bayern Munich. That was still something I won't be forgetting anytime soon, especially since they did end up winning 3-0. Uh, in that leg. I also did have to buy some home utensils, for example, my pots, cooking pans, uh, spatula, and stuff like that, or maybe I think I had to buy a monitor as well, and that was £101 for my home utensils, like my bed sheets, uh, and also an extra blanket, and my cooking utensils. For my electronics, I just bought the one monitor for £47.99p, and, and that I ended up, I think, having to throw away or give to someone just because I couldn't bring it home with me back to Australia. Oh, and here I've also included like my education uh, expenses. Like I bought a notebook just to be able to have some paper to write down uh, or attempt any questions that I was doing for schoolwork. Um, clothing, I had to do my laundry, of course. That was 28 pounds. And I needed to buy a few extra clothes because I didn't manage to bring as much as I needed when I was um, first arriving there. So with all those expenses categorized and allocated for, it comes to 3,570 pounds and 68 P. For six months, that's about, let's work it out, 595 or 600 pounds each month. So that is equivalent to about 20 pounds a day, which I think is okay, not great, not too bad, but because I wanted to enjoy my life over there, I didn't want to like really be that cheap. So I saved on like my living expenses, like not eating out too often, but I didn't want to save on my experiences like going to theater shows and going to football games, for example. So the final big expense was my student accommodation. So each week, my accommodation actually was very expensive, 202 pounds for a single ensuite room in Waterloo, which is actually a quite good place in London itself. It's very close to touristy places and it was very close to the tube station and also Sainsbury where you could just go downstairs, pretty much walk hundred meters and you'll find food that you can use to take back home. However, one bad thing about it was it was actually quite far from school. You had to take the tube every morning, which I think I said, I actually made a room tour video, which I'll put up here somewhere, which you can click on to see if you haven't already of what it's like to live in a student accommodation in London for 200 pounds a week. And that contract initially was for 38 weeks, but we got it reduced down to 29 because of the coronavirus and everyone could leave early and had that option if they wanted to. Um, in the end, I did take that option, but I still had to pay four extra weeks, which I had already paid by that time. So that in total was £6,060, which was by far my biggest expense. So just an update regarding my costs for student accommodation. The University of Sydney said that I was eligible for travel expense claims as part of my study abroad exchange program. And this covered the roughly six weeks of non-refundable accommodation that I had paid already and hadn't utilized. So this was refunded to me. So this meant I was $2,493.11 less out of pocket. So now we can use Excel to add that all up. We have an exchange rate, uh, which I use for the average during my time there. I couldn't work it out for every single day, of course. Uh, and then we had our main expenses all listed out and put into the Excel formulas. So we had our healthcare fixed costs, airline tickets. We also had our accommodation and we also had our airline tickets and general living expenses. So if we sum that all up, we get $21,775.13 Australian. So that's actually about 10,500 pounds uh, if you convert that to the UK currency. So yeah, that's what it looks like for living in London for that six months for me as an exchange study abroad student. 
Uh, I'm actually surprised that it wasn't as high as I expected, especially since initially with that airline ticket price, healthcare and visa, that was already pushing me into what I thought would be a very expensive nine month trip. But in the end, it wasn't too bad. I feel like I managed my expenses to a decent level. But of course, it would have been very easy for me to make some mistakes during that time. I might have forgotten to add in some expenses. I might have double added them in. So what we want to do now is make sure there were no errors in that calculation. So what I did in Excel was I created a table of all my expenses in Australia, all my debt in Australia for my student loans, and also my UK expenses in London. I converted that all to Australian dollars and I worked out my total expenses slash liabilities, which worked out to be $63,103.63. Then I worked out my revenues and that total worked out to be $76,972.31. So then from there, we can work out how much money we have in our bank accounts. And that should be equivalent to what our revenue minus expenses should be. So if something's wrong, then I must have recorded something incorrectly when I was in the UK. And as a matter of fact, I did do something wrong. I'm off by just over $1,100. Uh, that's to be honest, not something too significant. So out of $21,000, if you're off by 1,000, then that's only about a 4.7 or 4.8% difference. So that's not a huge mistake that I perceive. Uh, in accounting, it's not too big a deal. So I'm happy to settle on the fact of 21,000 if you want. I can be conservative and round that up to 22,000. So yeah, that's $23,000 and that is my expenses living in London as an exchange student from Australia for six months. So yeah, that's it. I pretty much, I feel like I've talked about all the main points that I wanted to discuss. Um, if you have any questions or if you want to learn more about how I manage my finances and all that stuff like that or any questions about London itself, let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video or if you found something useful, especially since you got so far all the way to the end, please consider subscribing to this channel and leaving a like. It would really help my channel out a lot. I think at the end of this video, this will wrap up pretty much my Imperial College journey playlist. Uh, I probably won't be making much more on my Imperial College journey unless there's more requests of you guys coming in just to learn more about it. I might consider making something extra. But yeah, I hope that was useful to you in some way or another. Take care and I hope to see you guys in the next video.